to release this masterpiece on DVD for the very first time. Hey, do all these leaves? Who do you think you is? Kunta Kinte? Excuse me. Hey, it's Kunta Kinte! Give me your car keys. You know, Will, I gave you my word. I'd think that'd be enough. <laughs> yeah, you lucky I ain't gonna do you like Kunta Kinte and chop off your foot. Mr. Zungumzi, buena. What's he doing, man? Kunta Kinte. Yabba dabba dabba do. You brought your big ass all the way back there. And all it is, your name is Joe. <laughs> to Joe. <laughs> and I thought your name would be Kunta Kinte or something. I'm getting tired of it. Joe, I got this. It is late at night and I'm going to have to put my foot down. Kunta Kinte put his foot down and got chopped off. Now shut the hell up and go back to sleep. <laughs> This is going out to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. First and foremost, uh, uh, brothers out there, sisters, I don't know how many brothers are online right now, but um, I just wanted to first open up with, has, have any of you brothers seen the movie Roots? The new series, Roots. Any of you brothers seen that show? God, I... I watched it um, the other night, just the first part. The episode has been released, I think, just the first part. And I um, was thankful that one of the, the awesome had um, shot out a Facebook message saying, are you all watching this? And I was able to then go to, because I forgot about it. But yeah, I did watch the whole thing. John, John. Yeah, because I, I believe the second part is on today and the third part. Actually, the third part is on today. But... Um, you know, think about it. Alex Haley is the one who wrote the book called Roots, and it was based on his family. And, um, you know, we all know that coming from that age, that, that era. So, I mean, when he came out with the movie, that was something brand new. I remember being a, I remember being a child or a young man watching Roots for the first time. And I didn't even know I had that type of anger in me being that young. Because I didn't know how we got here. No, most brothers and sisters did not know that we came here on slave ships the way that Roots were traded. Right? Right, brother? I mean... God, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah I mean, it was, nothing, it was nothing of its kind. There was nothing out there. There was no books written on it. I mean, there was books written on it, but we, we didn't have the Amazon or the uh, YouTube or the Google like we do now. You know, and so... Um, those who had books, you see, saw like uh, certain groups like uh, the uh, Muslims or the, the Black Panthers or, yeah, some black activists. They had those stores where they sold books. Up here, we have a store called Marcus Garvey Bookstore, which is in um, Oakland and uh, San Francisco before it got gentrified in the parts of the ghetto there. Um, but we used to go there and get our books. So um, that was the only way we knew about it other than our parents coming out of that era of uh, the segregation time. So um, Roots brought forth something brand new to the whole family and it came right into your household, right? I, so um, it's just a trip when you see how far it's come and how many people know that story, you know? God, and I remember too, um being a kid when the Alex Haley version came out. And again, like I mentioned before, I was raised um, in the Deep South, even though I was born in Chicago, but we moved back to where my family is, my father and mother was from, yeah. which was back in the South. So when that movie came, I mean, we were very uh, familiar with depression and, um, and, and, and white supremacy and, and those type of things at that time. But when the, we didn't ever really know, at least I didn't, how we got here. You know, we just knew this is the way it is, you know, and that, that you're going to be, um, you, you're different. And so when Alex Davis, the Haley movie came out, it really opened the eyes, not wide open, but it did open the eyes to especially the oppressed ones to see this is how we got here. Like with you, that's how we got here uh, by force. We got here on split ships in bad situations that we were treated horribly and, and forced to play to develop wealth for someone else. 
So that was, you know, something that wasn't being taught in the schools, but that actually bought it out and helped a lot of brothers get a hold on our on our so called origin. God. God. I, I, and and the, the funny thing about it is, I never really knew. I mean, as a child, all you could think of, all I remember is playing. All I want to do is play. I I didn't see. Uh, I knew there was a difference between black and white because, um, I you know living in living in the uh, northern states, California, and I used to go back and forth. I used to go back and forth from California to Texas to the East Coast. So I mean, I saw a, a diversity when I went to the South as a child to stay with my grandparents. It was just black and white. There was no Chinese. There was no Mexican. You know, you really didn't see that that many Mexicans down south back then when I was growing up. To be honest, all you saw was black and white. And now, if you go to Houston, all you see is Mexicans everywhere. Ishikar, tribe of Ishikar. But there wasn't really that many there when I was growing up. Not that I can remember. But um, for the most part, if you went to San Antonio, you had a lot of Ishikarites there. But um, going back, not to not to be far fetched, but um, as a child, I really didn't know how serious that whole racial that racial tension was because of um, you know I was in my play mode all the time. I knew the Martin Luther King thing that took place. I knew about the Malcolm X thing, but I, it wasn't important to me as a child, you know. You, but um, um, the th the thing about but when when Roots came out. It impacted me. And not only that, it impacted me when I went to school and dealt with the white teachers. I knew something was different because they, the white teachers would bring the stuff up in class back then. Because when they taught history, they would teach after Roots came out. I, I don't know about you. I, they would teach about how we came on slave ships and they would show old uh, real, the, what do you call those real footage? Where, 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 what do you call that kind of... Uh, like not microfish, but it was like a tape footage. What do you call that when they come in the wheels in the circles? I can't think of what it was. I, I remember how they used to show. No, no. Huh? That was a real, the real. Yeah, the real, the real, the real. That's how they. Your brothers and sisters probably don't know what we're talking about, but back then we didn't have no camcorders or no VHS recorders. We had a reel, and they would put this up in the school, and they would quickly always throw slavery. You know, it was, it was it was no big deal. They would show slavery pictures up on um, the screen for um, for extra credit or whatever. You know, and uh, me, my pops, and moms took me out of the ghetto, and they tried they tried to put me in a uh, 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 what do you call it? More like a private school for one year. My pops started making a little money and uh, doing construction. Uh, what I would see, what I would see that being in a white class, you know, it made me feel bad, man. It made me feel feel real bad, you know. Where I started sinking down in, in the seat because I didn't know the difference between Negroes and Africans. I didn't know we were the same, that we weren't the same people. So you know, when they would portray these images in a the movie, they would they would use real Africans. They wouldn't use Negroes. They used Africans with big uh, bones in their lips and everything. We didn't look like that. You know, but I was sink down in the seat, and uh, after a year uh, of being in that particular school, they tried to flunk me and put me in uh, a special, with a special ed class because <laughs> they used to have this exam they used to give back in those days, like a uh, they call it a cat a cat test, and what, it was a proficiency exam across the whole state, and all children had to take it, and. I didn't take it seriously. So I took the test, and not to deviate from the roots thing, but just showing you how, when you go to Edomite school, how they put you in certain categories. I didn't take the test seriously, so I was just, it was a bubble test where you uh, uh, bubble in the test or whatever, a Scantron. So I was just bubbling. I didn't care, I was just bubbling. Well, anyway, after that test, I failed. And so they were, they were quickly, instead of retesting me, they were going to put me in a special ed class right away until my pops. My pops came down and raised sand and was pissed off and said, <laughs> give my son this test again. Not only that, he pulled me to the corner and said, boy, if you don't pass this test, I'm going to beat a, beat a mud hole up in you. So he put the fear of the most high in me, and I aced the test. I had the highest score in the whole district. 
minute I passed that test, wow, wow. Pops pulled me out of that school. He just wanted to show them people that his son wasn't no dummy. He pulled me out of that school as soon as they took the uh, as soon as I passed the test, and he put me back in my old school where I was comfortable being around my own people. So, but Roots helped me relate to that when I saw it. So it was it was a lot of friction going on during that time when Roots came out, man. You know, don't you agree, I? Yeah, I do. And then when like they did the pitch. Um, a lot of the slavery scenes, things, you know, you, in the history books, and then when they would talk about it, they like they put on the either reel to reel or a projector, where you had to pull down the white screen. They they'll play this little projector and they'll show different things, but they made it a point to always. And what really went in my mind, and even after seeing Roots, this one was left in my mind, and I'm pretty sure it was left in a lot of other um, black minds at that time, was that you. You were portrayed, Negroes here in America, by your own families and, and, and rival tribes back in Africa. They are the reason why you are here. They are the ones who sold you into slavery, right. and we are like giving you a good thing. Right. We are allowing you, we have we've abolished that, and we are now giving you what we have. And open, you know, that's what they try to portray to us. And so I walked away with a sense of, wow, man, how could those um, nations in Africa fight against one another and then sell the other ones into slavery? And that's what I had in my mind up until last year. <laughs> so that's what I, you know, it's crazy. And, and, and you see this new roots. And what I noticed about the new roots is that after watching it, I don't know if you caught that when it first came on, they had uh, th these boats just in the water, and they said, and in these times, um, it was, slavery was um, going on all over the place. They said the Greeks did slavery. The Romans did slavery. And they said the Hebrews even I had that. slaves. Right. I caught that, man. You know? But they did that purposely because... You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Has arrived. They're, they're systematically, they systematically did that. Every, with these movies, I, every single word that they speak on, they system, they 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 take their time, place in these words, in this order. When they said the Romans, the Greeks, and the Hebrews, they they left out Arabs, they left out Africans, they left out a whole lot of other nations that came to the west coast of Africa. You know what I'm saying? But not only that. They said that the Hebrews took slaves and slaves came out of the Hebrews, which was totally false, man. It was false to the point the, way, right. they, the way they put it, they, the way they grouped the Hebrews with the Greeks and Romans to make it look like that they were all Edomites. And they weren't Edomites. You know, the Hebrews got their way before the Romans and the Greeks. So, I mean, matter of fact, the Greeks didn't even come that far down. The farthest they went to is the new place called Libya. You know, which back then it wasn't called Libya, all right. But uh, that was that was the northern part of Africa. That was as far as they went, which is Morocco. That's as far as they went. They didn't go no farther than that, you know. So I, yeah, I I agree with you on that. They uh, this movie Roots, they are pushing Islam all through that movie. And I, really, when you look at this movie Roots, what it is is a campaign against us, all the Hebrew Israelites. That's the reason why they came out with this movie again. It's a campaign to destroy the fact that we have found who we are. We have found that we're from West Af that we came out of West Africa due to the fact that we broke the Most High's laws and that we went into captivity based on that. If you looked on the slave ships on that movie Roots, what they showed was a lot of Muslims on that ship. They were all praying to Allah. They was not praying. And we understand that... The Arabs came over to the west coast of Africa and enslaved a lot of our people, but the Hebrews fought them. When they went into captivity, a lot of them were not Arabs or, or did not believe in Allah, you know. But, um, you know, they systematically took the Hebrew Israelites out of those lands, all right. So um, it, it's very interesting how they, how they recreated this whole thing, but they did it to fight against what we're teaching. You know what I'm saying? It's all the fight against what we're, what we're teaching, which is beautiful because... It, it really... Go ahead, I. 
No, I was just saying, I was just concurring with you, and that's exactly what it, what it was doing. And I almost, on the second one, they were showing, I mean, the newer version, they were showing how, with the circumcision, remember they was going off to be warriors, yeah. and then they said that through they got, they had to do circumcision. You know, I thought maybe they would go from there and they kind of reveal things, but, you know, you couldn't expect for them to allow a movie to be released that will tell the truth to the masses. It, it's, it's exactly what you were saying. It does the opposite. It, it, it confuses yeah. more people. It, you know, it's just and like I didn't think about that until you mentioned it when they said the, the Hebrew, I mean, excuse me, the Greek, the Romans, and then the Hebrew, they were trying to put them all so you can visualize that Hebrews are those um, ones that are occupying Israel today in the past. Right. You know, to, and it downplays the, the real Israelites. Right. So it, it has a lot of things in it. But, you know, they're very tricky, and that's what we're dealing with. When you read Revelation chapter 12, it tells you, uh, let me get it real quick, I have to read this out because this is the truth. This is what they're doing right now. I, um, when you go to Revelation chapter 12, and... Um, yeah, Revelation chapter 12, verse 15, and says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That flood is a, uh, is a, is a bucket of lies. That's all it is. And then it says, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now we've been swallowing up, we've been, we've been going to the earth this whole time, getting these artifacts, these Bibles, these apocryphas, the 1611 King James Bibles, uh, destroying everything that they have taught us. And so when you look at verse 17, it says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. He was angry with us and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So these movies that are coming out now are directly aimed at the Hebrew Israelites those new people who have found out who they are and to get them to fall and to get people to come up against them. You're going to see more books coming out saying that the Negroes that came over here from the Africans were Arabs. You're going to see more of this Arab stuff because it's already been, they've already been trying to work it into the system of America with this 9-11 thing. You know, so that's what's coming. So we up, we're fighting a serious war right now, man. You know, we're going up against this dragon. But it says here, um, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. It didn't say the whole world. It said, went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Hamashiach Yahushai. Everything now is spiritual and mental. So the TV is the perfect mechanism to destroy our minds. And it's the only place where you can't leave comments on. You know, you go on YouTube. <laughs> You can leave comments saying this is idiotic. You can't do that when you watch TV. Whatever goes out, goes out. And you're stuck with it. And it changes, yeah. and it changes the images of the minds of the people. There's nothing to contradict it other than us doing what we're doing right now, exposing it, exposing the lies. I, you know. But I was watching um, the second one, yeah. the second part, and uh, of course, Kunta Kinte, um, him and Fiddler make friends. But it even showed Fiddler as being a Muslim. Now, when you watch the first Roots, Fiddler was a, he was a born-again Christian, you know? He was a born-again Christian. He was eating pork. Fiddler on this one don't eat pork. Fiddler is a Muslim on this one. You know what I mean? He waking up to who he is, God. Fiddler, you know? Not only that, he fought, he fought the Edomites and got killed on the second one just to defend the child Kizzy of Kunta Kinte on this. But Kunta Kinte the whole time is talking like we're talking. The old Kunta Kinte didn't speak like that, uh, uh, whatever his name is, Girardi or whatever his name is back at the play that was an actor. But this Kunta Kinte is talking about how much he hates this land. He says, I hate this country. When did he speak like that in the other roots? And that, all that's showing me is that they've been watching us and that's what we say. We say that about this country. We, we hate the wickedness that's going on in this country. It's so wicked, man. The wickedness of this country is pouring out on all the people. Blood touches blood and sin touches sin. You know, and so um, it's amazing. I, you know, what, what, what other things did you catch in that movie? It was, it was um, 
few things. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen the second or the third yet. I only saw the first. And, um, you know, it, it, when he was, well, one thing, I just want to bring this up. I'm not sure how uh, you, Occam, feel about this, but this Roots and the release of these pictures seem to have a, a little deeper issue. And I'm speaking on the current events and the tensions that are growing and it seemed to be purposeful to draw what I have been checking out to be a cause for um, martial law to be instituted. When you see the type of things that are going to make, you see the presidential can candidate, yeah, I'm actually a nice uh, person. Donald Trump, everything that flows out of his mouth is to anger and the call people to divide and want to actually um, have unrest. I mean, by attacking mostly uh, the Issachar and, and, and also Judah. And by this coming out, it just seems to now, when people relive that, especially Judah, when we look at this, like we, the it, hardest it kind of or one of the hardest and schools and to get into. Did well and, at the and school. That came out, made a fortune. It to be a systematic way to I'm bring forth something. Because we I, see the tensions at the rally. All these trials that they, they, they get in ones in Arizona, New Mexico, China, ones out in California. It bullshit. seems to be this, they, they're the just waiting for something to really break where it's going to be a massive civil unrest. It's going to then allow Obama to institute martial law. And, you know, anyway, that's just something I've observed. And I just said, well, why did this movie come out again at this time? Right. You know, it, it, so that's, that was just a different angle at it as well. I just right. wanted to bring right. that out. Right. It's funny you brought that up. Uh, uh, I was told that, too, by another person, though, uh, who was saying, uh, it was one of the sisters, she was telling me that uh, when you look at that movie, why are they bringing it out now? And she spoke about the election times coming up. And um, I, had, I hadn't thought about that till she mentioned that. She said, pay attention to what's going on. She said, you know, a lot of people don't like Donald Trump. You know, there's a lot of different things going on. And, and as we know, when you watch the news, they're continually sparking this, this um, black versus white issue. They're continually pushing this to the forefront. Well, all these other races are here. But why do they keep sparing on the blacks versus whites over and over, which is ridiculous. Then when you look at, and that's, I mean, that, but that's prophecy, Jacob and Esau. But then when you look at even with the gorilla versus the, uh, uh, the gorilla and the baby, the four-year-old baby that fell in, why are they continually pushing that on the news? You know? Why is that getting air paid? Why, you know, where did it come from? Yeah, was it serious? Yeah. Was it different? Yeah. But if you Google or YouTube, something dealing with a gorilla versus uh, a gorilla dealing with a baby you get a whole bunch of videos you know and so yeah there's a lot of different things why this stuff is being sparked and you're right you know anybody else on the line yeah so when you look at the uh, when you look at the scriptures man I wanted to bring out some scriptures um, that deals with how when you watch Roots and you see how they pushed, I mean also they were pushing, oh, I don't know if you caught it, it was on the second part, it just came to mind. Uh, the little girl Kizzy and her little white Edomite master was taking her out to the woods. So they go out to the woods and they both got white dresses on and this Edomite man just grabs Kizzy and starts preaching to her. And so they stumble across a baptism where they got all these Edomites baptized in people. And um, uh, the brother, there's one brother getting baptized. And then the Edomite preacher is preaching, and he's saying directly to the camera, he said, all you people who took these black people into slavery are going to burn. And I thought that was interesting. I said, now why are they saying that in this movie? They didn't say this in the last movie. Wow. Why are they saying it in this movie? You know? Wow. It's, it's just it's just amazing, man. It's, but I know what's going on. We're, we are the new age, meaning back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, there were certain things that you could say on TV that you couldn't say today. I mean, that you, you know, that you couldn't say then that you could say today. So a lot more is coming out. You got uh, a lot of rated, more rated R movies coming out. 
you know, a lot of more PG, uh, uh, PG-13 movies coming out. A lot more uh, loose lips, curse words coming out more so than ever before, like today. So also the race tensions is also building as well. So, I mean, there's a lot to think about when you're watching these movies, you know. Anybody else got any comments or uh, questions on that, on that Roots topic? All right. Uh, let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Did you shut the door? Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Let's go. And I want to show you this real quick because this is what we didn't do, what we always tend to do. Uh, for a lot of people that uh, have not heard us before, we always open up with Colossians 3 and 17 because this is our day to day walk. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all by Hashem Hamashiach Yahushai, giving thanks to the Abinawa, the Father by Him. All right, everything is by the Father and the Son. So we give them all praise. But when you look at the scriptures, go, let's, go, let's go four verses down. Check this out. Uh, verse 22. It says, Servants, obey in all things your master, according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. You see that? So this is one of the scriptures that they used against us in slavery. They always told us, obey your masters, right? When they took us by force, when they took us, basically they, they kidnapped us. And they, now they're trying to influence us by putting the Bible, reversing the Bible on us, which is our heritage, and telling us the opposite of what we need to know. This verse is not talking about those slave masters. Th this is talking about our elders, our teachers, all right? The high priests. This is what this is talking about. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, our Savior, the Most High. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. All right? So, I mean, this is, this is, these are the little things that Esau did. Remember, remember what the scripture said in Psalms 15 and 16. Let's go there real quick. This is something that the Most High said because he knew if our enemies touched this book, he knew what they would do with it. Psalms 50 and 13. Uh, let's go to uh, 16. He says, But unto the wicked, the most I save, what hath thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou should have taken my covenant in thy mouth? Now here you are, stealing people, kidnapping people, killing people. Like, like what we see on the movies, that's just the tip of the iceberg, what they have done to us. Why is history important? Because to everybody else, their history is important. The Holocaust is important, all right? Uh, the Chinese, when they got wiped out, that's important. The Japanese, when they got bombed in Hiroshima, that's important. Why, why we gotta forget everything that we've learned? Well, what happened to us? Our women getting raped. Why we gotta forget that stuff? We always wanna be the first ones to forgive uh, the, uh, this other nation that came and robbed, stole, beat us to death, killed us. Every every law, every every crime in the penal code, they have used. Has arrived. Us. Every single one. They have broke every single law that they use on our own people. Because prisons are full with our people. So, the most I say to Esau, look, what power do you have to, to take my statues in your mouth and to declare them? Okay? So these are the problems and the issues that we deal with and we don't understand why this stuff is happening. This whole place is cursed. It's cursed because they are not owning up to what they have done. All right, they're fugitives. According to the Bible, he, the Most High calls these people fugitives. We are the children of the slaves. We are the children of the seeds of Abraham that were brought here based on prophecy. Okay, people, I, I watched this uh, video footage not too long ago. And, and like you said, Brother Yahar, you were saying that um, what they're trying to do is uh, uh, water this down, this truth. They're trying to water it down now. And uh, they had this one Edomite, so-called white man, 
uh, I think he may be in the Bay Area. He was analyzing all the Hebrew Israelites. There's a video out. I was watching it. This guy studied us. And, you know, he's going to do make money off of us. And he understood by studying us that there were different categories of Hebrew Israelites. He understood, and, and most brothers and sisters don't understand that, you know. They, uh, brothers and sisters can't even uh, uh, di uh, find out the difference between one versus another. It's just like church congregations. You've got different church congregations all over. It's the same thing with the Hebrew Israelites, okay? So this white man did his research, and he saw that, that you had different camps, different congregations, some who were humble, some who were uh, uh, all out damaging with the words, cursing out people. You know, you had some that followed the laws. You had some that came into the truth and they were uh, strictly learning the truth based on their heritage, which is true. All of this is true. Your heritage is true. Okay. But what he didn't explain is that, yes, this is who these people are. They were kind of like laughing about it. You know, and, and to the Most High, he said that this is going to be confusing to the other people, to the tares. They ain't going to understand it. Because if you look at it, the only way, the reason why we go out and we teach to our people on the streets is for that spirit to go out and touch the ears of those who have the spirit to understand. There's a lot of people who don't have the spirit to understand. Okay? So... To make a long story short, we're being attacked. And it's just like with, with Samson and the Philistines, when Samson went to those pillars, they scoffed at Samson saying, hey, you can't push down those pillars. You don't have your strength. And as he pushed, they began to scoff and laugh and make fun of him until the pillars started moving. And when that dust started falling off that Colosseum and eventually started falling, then they started believing in the, in the power of Israel. And it's the same way today. The same thing is going on right now. Now this, now this word is moving so fast that I, I'm not saying we can sit back and watch now, but basically that's what it's like. We can put in our work so much over the years, and all of us have done our part, and we're continually doing our part, that now this word is taking off. It's fire. Everywhere is taking off. And they can't stop it. You can't go on the Internet and not run into something. We got, you got Hebrew music, you got Hebrew storytelling, you got children's stuff, you got everything. You got clothing wear, you got, you got financial districts, you got everything now just popping up out of thin air. You can't avoid it, you know? You can't avoid it. So, so what are these people going to do now? They're going to scoff, they're going to mock, and it's like the scriptures say, they're going to make war with us. So we got to be on our best we got to be on our best P's and Q's and be patient, like the scripture says, and keep the commandments. And believe in the Son, have the faith and testimony of Christ. This is what we have to do as a people. So, I mean, it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I think it's beautiful to myself, to be honest. All these years, people didn't know who the Hebrew Israelites were when it was right there in the Bible the whole time. Like I always say, we just started learning how to read in the last hundred years. It has arrived. The understanding really hadn't came until the last 30 years. There was a, um, uh, Tom Joyner used to have a radio show out here. And of course, Tom Joyner had satellite radio shows set up all over the United States. Well, I remember when he did a, ra had his satellite show set up here in Oakland, California. It was getting a lot of ratings. So they started to boycott it. All right. The white people and uh, those who have money different groups started to boycott Tom Joyner. They didn't want him here because he was gaining momentum and more black people stopped listening to the, uh, they stopped listening to these R&B radio stations, KML, uh, uh, whatever radio shows they have. They stopped listening to it because it was garbage, playing the same music over and over. Tom Joyner started to spark the minds of the people and started causing them to think, not in the scriptures, but just think in general. He started having um, a show on there called Ask Whitey. <laughs> and I remember I used to listen in on this show. And the funny thing about it, the Ask Whitey show, I remember that uh, somebody called in and they asked Whitey. He says, why do white people always have more real estate than black people? So the sister called in. And this white guy said, it's simply because 
we got here first. And, and, you know, he didn't say they got here first and stole the land. He said, we got here first and we got the land. He said, so we got to keep changing it up every 50 years so you guys can't catch up. He said, we've been doing real estate forever. He said, y'all just started doing real estate. So when that big boom happened in 2008, 2009, a lot of black people lost their homes. A lot of black brokers didn't know what they were doing. A lot of black brokers went to jail because they didn't know how to, they didn't know how to manipulate the real estate system to the point where a lot of these Edomites, so-called white people, knew how to do it, okay? But on the show, the guy said, it's simply because you guys haven't had the experience. Every time we get the experience, they change up the game. They change it up. Y'all know that. We can't achieve anything because the game keeps changing. Uh, the dot-com era, remember when, uh, back in the 90s when it first came out, you had millionaires retiring within three years' time. Kids, 23, 24-year-olds retiring because they was in the game. Was there any blacks in there retiring? Nope. Not many. If It was probably like less than 1%. But as soon as we started going, going that way or going that road, going down that road, they changed it up. They changed it up. By the time we got in, the door was already closed. So it's just... It's just we just got to be on guard and know what we're up against. And like I always say, this is not our country. Where are we going to go? We can't go nowhere until the most I said we could go. We can't go to Africa. That ain't where we're going to go. It didn't work for Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey, he had hundreds of ships. They were all defective. No way in hell were they going to let this Negro have three million, uh, uh, three million, um, representatives, uh, uh, members, come together, give them the money to get all these ships and start his own trade center from Africa to different places for the Negroes. They was not going to let that happen. Y'all saw Wall Street, the Black Wall Street, what happened with that? You know, we built that up and they came and bombed it. So, I mean, you got to know, like the scripture said, this is not our rest. All the most I is concerned about right now is just taking care of your own, take care okay, of your family. Okay, going back to this man. Come together for this word. You see, uh, learning his Judah word. Judah right there. I and preparing D -D ourselves for the kingdom to come. Right That's there. That's what he wants us to do. Any of your brothers seen that new movie, X-Men? Anybody seen that movie? Adama. Yes, sir. Uh, what about that movie? You know? That was all. That was all prophecy, man. They showed. How oh, yeah, I wish I was coming back on the earth, finding him, uh, finding one hundred forty-four thousand. But I noticed at the end of the movie, they tried to make it seem like they could overpower Yahusha and destroy him. You know, right? That was crazy to watch that, right? Because he was, he had so much power that it was the stuff he was doing was magnificent. You know, like he was bestowing power to people and whatnot, and then they just destroyed him. At the end of the movie, that was, people didn't understand that that was up. So, but like they think that they overpowered the Lord, and it's not gonna happen. Right, right. I, I can see that too. As a, uh, the, the man came back, uh, did they say two thousand years or five thousand years? I, I can't remember. But um, he came back as a charismatic super mutant, and his his thing was to show these mutants how to how to enhance their mutant abilities that they weren't using their full capacity of their mutant strengths. And so what he, what he did was he showed them how to use it. It's just like what Christ says. He says when he come back, he'll teach us all things, right? So he saw his movies. When he created these movies, he's getting all his material from the Bible. You got to watch these movies with the spiritual eye. So when he did that, um, like the brother said, the end of the movie shows what? It shows the so-called uh, uh, Edomite or white woman being the goddess who took down the god, right? What does the Most High call this place? Mystery Babylon, he calls it a woman. When you read Revelation chapter 17, he calls it a woman, right? Let's go to Revelation 17 real quick. Revelation chapter 17 and yeah, let's go to verse three. Okay, so this is Revelation 17, verse three. 
So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. Now that woman in that movie who took down that God, the so-called Egyptian God, I, he called himself, he called himself Ra. Oh, has arrived. He, he called himself Ra. But what, what they did was they used that woman. She had the most demons in her. If y'all can remember, she hadn't at least, she hadn't controlled the demons in her. Y'all remember that? Those who saw the movie? She couldn't control herself on this side. What, what did the professor say? The professor who was on her side was getting beat down by the so-called Egyptian God. And he told her to come forth and unleash everything she had on this Egyptian guy. And so when she unleashed it, she unleashed all hell on him. And she was able to overpower this Egyptian guy, which like the brother said, could have been a reflection of what Christ was gonna be on the earth when he comes back. So they're trying to say that Mystery Babylon is gonna overpower Hamashiach Yahushai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? So. When you look at these things, man, it's, it's powerful. So she overcame him, right? And disintegrated him. Okay? But the whole point was he wanted to find all the X-Men with mutant abilities all around the earth. Like the brother said, he was looking for the 144,000. Now, going, I watch movies all the time, and a lot of the brothers who are online watch a lot of their movies. And uh, if you brothers got anything to say on this, please do. But there was another movie that came out and it was uh, Superman, oh, Batman versus Superman. You brother see that one? A whole lot of symbology, whole lot of symbology in that one. Whole lot of symbology, Superman dying, a representation of Israel dying and coming back. You know, he coming back, y'all know that. Or he, maybe he, they were showing him as uh, Christ dying and coming back. But anyhow, um, make a long story short, remember what Lex Luthor said? He said that uh, there were mutants on, he said that there were superheroes popping up like antibodies on the earth. Right? He said, he said they said they didn't understand how all these uh, super people were coming out and they were popping up like antibodies. And then he, and then he said uh, at the end of the movie, Lace Luther, when he was in jail, he said, it's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And all you can hear is a bell going tick tock, tick tock. Right? So, I mean, Everything right now, when you watch all these movies, it's about self, it's, it's about destruction, which is what the Bible is about, destroying the nations of the earth. When you read the scriptures in Revelation, it tells you when Christ comes back, the whole world will make war with him. So they're trying to give you small little images. Really, they're trying to get your mind ready for it. You know, that's pretty much what they're doing out there. And um, uh, there's a lot more movies coming out like that. Anybody else got something to say on that? Yeah, that's crazy. I um, really notice, like, pay attention to movies. You see that the underlying message is usually the same, like, when it comes to different movies, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually getting tired of seeing all of that. Because <laughs> it seems like that's the same plot for every movie. You got uh, Batman versus Superman. You got the X-Men. You got um, uh, independence. Everything's destruction. All these a uh, action movies coming yep. out, it's all about the end days. Destruction. You know, aliens coming on Earth, uh, super, super, superhuman strength, uh, abominable beasts coming on the Earth. You know, that's all it's talking about the whole time. You know? And so... Has arrived. Let's go to... Um, let's go back to the scriptures. Let's look at some more verses that...